You're listening to the Question and Answer program with our Bible teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, who for over 30 years answered the many questions that he received from his listeners. This program is a ministry of the Through the Bible Radio Network. The scriptural view of the doctrine of election and free will has been debated since the Reformation. Many of these questions and thoughts have been considered by this young lady in Glen Birney, Maryland. She says that she has come to the conclusion that some are elected to heaven and some to hell. She believes that God knows all things from the beginning to the end, so he would know who would be saved and who would not. She continues by saying that God allows the multitudes to continue on blindly through life because they won't accept God unless he opens their eyes. She asks, would you please tell me if I'm right or wrong? If I'm wrong, can you please correct my thinking? Well, may I say to you, I not only think you're wrong, but I think that type of thinking is very dangerous. If I believed what you believe, I would never attempt to teach the Word of God again. I would never try to win anybody to Christ because there'd be no need of it. Now, if you feel that God, all he's done, has created a bunch of zombies and that they're going to move at his command, and at his command he's going to send most of them to hell, then may I say you have a frightful, terrible view of God. The fact of the matter is the heathen that think of him in such horrible terms as you see in some of the images that they make, the God of War, for instance, out in the Hawaiian Islands, that's as frightful looking a uh, face that I've ever seen. That's their God. Well, I would say that your God isn't any better looking than that one. Now, let me approach this from an altogether different viewpoint than you have. Let's move back and think of an infinite God for just a moment. This infinite God can do anything in the world that he wants to do. He is free to act, but he is actually free to act only in that area in which he absolutely believes. Now, we know something about him. He's a holy God. He's a just God. He's a righteous God. He's a God of love. Now, if you feel like that God is doing the thing that you're doing, then God is not just at all. He's not righteous. The fact of the matter is, I have my doubts whether he's infinite or not. May I say to you, we have a God that is so great, so wonderful, so far above our thinking that our thought patterns don't even enter into his thinking. He told, it says in Isaiah, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your way. God's thoughts and ways are different than yours. Now let me give you what may be a new thought to you. I don't know. Our God is so infinite that he can create creatures and give them a free will. And in the area of their free will, why he can accomplish his purpose. And in that area of their free will, it is free will. They're not zombies. When he created Adam and Eve, they were given absolute freedom in the Garden of Eden. They could do what they wanted to do, and they did it, by the way. May I say to you that today the same thing is true of mankind, that he's able to make a decision, and still, if that decision is contrary to the will of God, and many men are making the decision, as you say, against God, they do not disturb his plan or purpose, because in that area, an infinite God is able to make creatures with a free will, and they can do what they want to do, and it won't interfere with his purpose. For instance, do you think little man on this planet today, even with his free will, do you think that he can upset Almighty God? Of course not. Do you think that man has a free will? He certainly does. And there'll be no interference on the part of God at all. And you say that they can't move unless the Holy Spirit moves. Well, may I say to you that there must come into the heart of man, and this is something that 
moves in the area of free will now is a conviction. Some men have a conviction, some don't. I sat next to a young man when I was in seminary. That young man, when we had an outstanding missionary, Dr. Lambie, I think of the Sudan Interior Mission, or it could have been African Mission, that's been a long time ago. He spoke, and he so moved all of us. He moved all of us to tears. That young man next to me had a conviction he ought to go as a missionary. I had no conviction like that at all. Now, don't tell me that God was pushing into the mission field, and he wasn't pushing me into the mission field for the very simple reason. I just happened to know I exercised my free will. I've got a free will, and so have you got a free will. Now, let's look at some scripture that will bear this out. After giving that marvelous chapter, the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the bared arm of the Lord revealed? That bared arm of the Lord is salvation, the lamb that was slain. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way. That's the problem with the human family. It's his own way. And God could turn us all into zombies tomorrow and make the whole human race bow down before him like a zombie. Or maybe the Lord could put in each one of us a system like they're able to put today in airplanes and everything that they can make today. All you do is push a button. But God's not doing it that way. He could do it that way, but he didn't do it that way. He wants free moral agents to make a choice. And he took that risk that there would be those of them that would not choose him at all. Now, in that 53rd chapter of Isaiah, he provided the salvation. They've turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. When man's going his own way, God now provides a salvation for him. Well, what about it? Then turn a couple pages and you'll be in the 54th chapter. And what does it say? Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Well, I say to you, that's an invitation. And what is the condition? Thirsty. You have a conviction that you're a sinner, need a Savior? That's something that comes into a man with a free will. A zombie wouldn't move that way. A creature with a free will has a conviction. And this is an invitation. Ho, everyone that thirsty. Now, let's bring that up to date. Coca-Cola uses that same method. For the past few years, they've had an unusual sign. It's a bottle of Coca-Cola that's down in a lot of ice cubes. Sure looks good. It's on a billboard. And it has only one word on that billboard. And that word is thirsty question mark. Now, you drive down the freeway. You look over in a field. There's that sign. You can pull off at the next place, drive in a filling station, get your Coca-Cola. Somebody says, well, everybody doesn't have the money. If it's salvation, oh, everyone that thirsteth, the only condition is thirst. You don't need money. This is without money and without pride. All you need is thirst. Now, that thirst comes to creatures that have a free will. Animals, even. I notice when they show these African pictures, the animals go down to the water hole in the afternoon. Why do they go down there? Because God pushes them down there? No, they're thirsty. Man turns to God. Why? He's thirsty. Yeah, but this man says, I don't need God. How is he able to make a statement like that? He's got a free will. And the Lord Jesus Christ stood that day And he said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me. 